I'm just such a big believer. God loves to show up when he's requested. But do you know that you can sing a song, pray a prayer, read your Bible, go to church, and never request God to show up? Been there, done that? It's not that you know that you're doing that. You don't. It's just what you've been taught. So we go with what we know. Right? The idea is the Holy Spirit takes us beyond what we know. And he takes us beyond our present experience to new things. And it's all within the 300,000 square miles of the promised land of God's word. We just, you know, it's within those boundaries, but there's a lot there that's unexplored and unexperienced, right? And the Holy Spirit takes you to those places when, when you say, Lord, break me out of my comfort box and, and, and take me into a place where I might be humiliated. I mean, like we had one, one of the leaders stand up in Wednesday morning and go, yeah, I've got a problem with lust and I, I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm, and it, it, do you know that you can like have a difficulty in your walk with the Lord and finding victory and you're reading and you're praying and you're doing all the stuff that normally one does to crucify their flesh and yet have no victory. Amen. You really can. It's because you're trying to deal with a demonic problem with disciplines right. and that doesn't work. Versus the other way around. You know, it, it, we have to identify and discern what's going on. And, and a lot of times people are frustrated in the church because they're doing all the stuff that's good stuff to, to crucify the flesh. We do it every day, right? You have devotions in the morning, you're crucifying the flesh. It's good. It's, Lord, here's my day timer. Not my will, your will be done. It's wonderful stuff. But that in of itself doesn't necessarily deal with oppression. And so when we come together, it's like we're going, man, we want an atmosphere of God's presence that deals with that secondary issue, that oppression, that I'm doing all the stuff and I'm frustrated. And that's why I don't come to a prayer meeting because it does nothing for me or I don't really read my Bible anymore because I'm frustrated because it's not working. There's something additional you need, which is the laying on of hands, people praying over you, the anointing of oil, things that we read about in the Bible that, that are there, not for religious purposes, their kingdom purpose. They have a purpose, but we don't have faith in that. And, and I'm saying when we step out in faith and, and we mix the discipline with the humility, because you can be disciplined and, and prideful. <laughs> you know what I mean? You can, you, can, you can have a cemetery degree and not be humble, right? You can do all the stuff and still be really arrogant, but, but when you mix the disciplines that are good with humbling yourself like this leader did and said, hey, I got an issue with lust, and it was something because you saw everyone go, wait a minute, he's in leadership. Now, some of you are going, who, who, who was it? Who was it? You're messing everything I'm saying if you're thinking that. You really are. You're messing what I'm trying to communicate if you're wondering who it is. That's not the point. Who it is, it's you. It's you. <laughs> it's all of us, right? We've all got stuff we're just not willing to get real about. And, and we live in an era of Christianity where it's conducive to denial, where we just kind of sit there and, you know, we go, okay, I got my chair. I got my chair. And, okay, entertain me. Yeah. Educate me. Right. Make me feel good about me. Where's Tony Robbins and Joel Osteen? Make me feel good about you know what I mean? And we got, and I'm not trying to bash people. I mean, it's just, like, we can only take people where we're at. We can't take them further than where we're at, right? And I'm just saying there's so many people in the culture today that, that, that there's a real ceiling there. And God wants to blow the ceiling off. And humility does that. God gives grace to the humble. You know, and when you humble yourself, and I, I watched so many people, it was so attractive, so many people. I, I watched several folks that have just been struggling and, and going through the disciplines and doing this stuff by every moral right, human morality, and even church morality. They're very holy people, but walking in defeat, whether it is discouragement, depression, some type of, of, of disorder that's self-harm or something that's going on year after year after year after year. And that gets really frustrating and discouraging in the church when you never find victory in these areas. You start to go, why go to church? Why read my Bible? Why pray? It doesn't work. Right? Do you know that's the enemy's plan? I'm here to tell you there's a way to break through that, and that's the train I'm on. That's the wind that's blowing. I'm inviting you to set your sail and be part of that. Man, 
It doesn't have to be Wednesday morning that you come, though it'd be a good idea to commit yourself for a month and just say, I'm coming. I'm coming to pray over people. Sometimes your healing is not getting prayed over. Sometimes it's like praying over people where the Holy Spirit starts prophesying through you when you're praying over them, and then something comes out that was used for them, but the Holy Spirit is for you too. And you walk away wrecked. Sometimes it's that. But commit yourself to, to a greater level of humility. The Bible says humble yourself. It's much better to humble yourself than be humbled. <laughs> Any amens to that? It's much better. To ha now, how do you do that? Like that leader did on Wednesday. That was humbling himself. Right? And so when we have prayer invitation on a Sunday morning and people come up, they're humbling. E either they're, they're like emotionally dysfunctional and codependent and want to say, look at me, I'm spiritual. I, I don't know their heart. Or they're humbling themselves and saying, I don't care what people think. I need prayer and I'm desperate and I'm hungry and I'm thirsty. God, fill me. And you've got an opportunity to, when we worship here on Sunday morning, don't, please just don't wait for your favorite song. Come get on your face, humble yourself, get prayer, get communion and say, God, I've had contempt at your table and I've taken the bread and the cup and I've made a mockery and it's brought disease, it's brought sickness, it's brought oppression, it's brought demonic detachments. I want to deal with this God and this place of atmosphere, the power of God, this is the place to do it. You hear me? That's what we're going to be about moving forward. You say, oh, haven't we been already? No, not really. Just kind of in, in philosophy, but not in practice. We want to practice. You hear me? Amen. Now, some of you, that scares. And I got letters this week because there were some people being delivered from demons last week. And some people go, this ain't the church for me. I'm sorry to hear that. Really, I got some emails of people that were like, this is just not right. This is not right. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you feel that way. But... I want to see people free, right? I want to see people free. Hallelujah.